Hey guys, welcome back to Foul B TV. Make sure you subscribe, like, and comment down below. Um, as you can see from the title, um, you guys know I'm always just comfortable with, you know, we family. But as you can see from the title, I want to talk about how to deal with loss, right? When you're grieving someone that's, um, that God called home, the deceased. Um, I'm going to share... A quick testimony about my life and just kind of give you some suggestions and just show you how I was able to court to cope with loss in my life um, I've been hit um, with loss tra tragically um, twice in my life you know there was other losses but tragically as an adult um, something that hit me that was an impact um, twice in my life and I just want to give you a brief testimony and just give you some suggestions on what I do and how I'm able um, to cope how I'm able to continue to live and be a blessing to others it's not the end of the road you know as um, I don't want to sound harsh but in reality the truth of the matter is you have to keep going you have to keep living you know for for those who have children you have to keep living for your children for those who don't have children you have to keep living for yourself and those that are around you there's always um someone that needs what we have I, I, i'm not just with ministry but i have learned that in life that someone always needs what you have so you know your value you know your value you're an asset um to this world and um about 12 years ago august 29th made 12 years august 29th 2020 made 12 years that my husband's been deceased i was married for nine and a half years i got married at 19 um and i have three children we had two together and one he helped me raise when I got when I got with Raheem my daughter was one years old um, just turned one um, you know I didn't expect that I thought I was gonna you know we had some issues we were married young but I thought I was gonna grow old with this man I was having all these children you know um, I had the boys like uh, two years after each other they were young they were babies um, when he passed, I believe Raheem was like five, Prince was two, and um, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do, how I was going to raise these children, um, you know, what life had in store for me, you know, um, there was so many things concerning that death too, because his death, because you have to understand, I always learned that, especially in the black community sometimes, not all the time, but marriages and deaths can bring the worst out of families, okay? It's, it's the time where you should be coming together, but sometimes it brings the worst out of families. And it was just with so much drama also um, revolving around his death. So I had to deal with the drama. I had these babies. Um, I had to have a realization, a reality check that this man that I watched grow up, you know, that I was spent all of these years with, that I grew up with, um, you know, he's going. And I just remember from that point on, when I got the news and we went to the hospital and stuff, he had got hit by a motorcycle accident. Um, that night, he came to me. I remember him coming to me and it was like it was like God just knew what I needed to hear because of everything that was taking place even from the hospital from that night. And he said to me, you know, um no matter what you hear, no matter what you hear, what you see, I always loved you and these children. I love you. And it felt so real. And I just held on to that. And I always been a strong individual. And this is why I'm doing this video because some people, it's not in them. You know, a lot of people ask me, how do you keep going this and third? And it's like, huh? I just do it. It's in me. You know what I mean? Some things are just in you, right? And some things have to be grown. Some things have to be taught. Some things have to be groomed. But for me, being strong, it's in me. And I just knew that my children needed me. I knew um, I, I'll have another testimony. Comment down below if you want to hear the story about when I was young, you know, in and out of foster care and stuff like that. So I just knew how life can be, especially regarding my children, if I didn't, if I wasn't in my right state of mind, you know, if I didn't be the person that they needed. I knew just as much as I had a loss and I took a major loss, they did too. Um, you know, that first two days I wasn't eating and stuff like that, wasn't showering. 
And I remember my brother-in-law and my sister came, my brother-in-law came over and me and, and, and my sister and him, we were sitting down and they was like, uh-uh, you stink cracking jokes and stuff. And I was like, uh-uh, let me get myself together. Got in the shower, ate, and I just had that will that I had to continue with my life. I had to make sure that we bury him correctly. You know, I had to make sure that my children wasn't losing it because even as young as they were, especially my five-year-old, like they understood like daddy's born. Like I never heard kids cry the way I heard my children cry um, that day. And I just knew, you know, again, like I said, like life had to go on. And I just want to encourage you to keep going. I want to encourage you to draw your strength from God. You know, some people I know, you know, I'm a Christian and I preach a, a internet church, Pray to Slay Ministries, the link to our channel is down below in the description bar. But some people don't have Jesus. Some people, you know, are Muslim. Some people um, are atheists, you know. But you're going to have to have the strength to pray and call on someone. Because the only some there are certain situations that life will bring you that only a higher power can give you that source that you need to keep going. And for me, it was Christ. God was that higher power. God was that strength that I needed to continue to go on. Because the truth be told, even though I'm strong, I, I it, there was a lot I was dealing with, and there's no way that I was able to deal with everything that was coming and being thrown at me without God. The first thing you have to do, you're going to have to pray and you're going to have to just give it all to God and just say, God, I need you. I can't do it without you. You know, um, help me. Whatever it is that you need in that moment, say it to him and say it out loud. Don't hold it in your mind. Don't hold it in your heart. Say it out loud. God, I need you. God, why did you do this? Why, why did you take him? Why did you take her? Like, just tell God how you feel and you will feel relief. Second, get in the shower. You got to get in that shower. There's something about the power of the water. And I believe because it's so significant and symbolic into the baptism, you know, the water. And when you baptize somebody in the, in the name of Jesus, you know, there's a purification that takes place, sanctification, becoming one spiritually. And there's something liberating about the water when it's hitting you in the shower. Take a shower. Then try your best but eat something even if it's a little meal even if it's a shake put something in your in your in your in your um body so you can have some strength because god's going to give you the spiritual strength god's going to give you the strength and the will to go but you're going to need some physical strength because you've been way down you've been hit and most of the time when we're mourning we don't eat then i want you to start making sure you hold on to those beautiful memories that you had of that person hold on to the memories to the thoughts to the things that you shared and make yourself believe that they will want you to live your best life that they will want you to continue to go on they wouldn't want you to deteriorate and when you really have faith in yourself to believe that it's a different ball game because you say you know what I got to I got to show them that I got this that I'm going to keep going. You know, and you have to tell yourself, you have to love yourself enough to keep going. I learned that loving yourself is such a big aspect part of life. Whether it's a relationship, you look at some relationships, abusive relationships, and somewhere down the line the person forgot to love themselves, you know, whether it's the person that's the abuser, they forgot to love themselves because if you love yourself, you're going to, you're going to love yourself enough to love on someone else. Love is the equation to everything. Even all this hate that we see in the world, racism, everything, injustice. If there was some love involved, it wouldn't be that way. So you're going to have to say to yourself, I love me that I got to pull it together because sometimes pulling it together for your children and for everybody is not enough. You know, it has to be about you too. And go through the stages. You're gonna go through the grieving, you're gonna go through the crying, you're gonna go through the not eating. It's okay to go through your stages, but I wanna say realistically maybe a week. And then after that seven day, you're gonna have to pick yourself up. You're gonna have to keep going. You know, some people won't need the week, but Give yourself seven days and then, because 
anything after seven days can become a hardcore pattern and you don't want that you don't want to fall into a depression because depression is, is it's a spirit and listen i'm gonna get biblical and, and gotta be the pastor right now it's a spirit it's and it's something that you don't want to overtake you because spiritual warfare is so hard sometimes to get out of it can become a process so imagine trying to cope with a death and then having a spiritual warfare battle as well no you don't you don't need that you're you've been through enough you've been through enough and you know just take one day at a time it's okay to be having a conversation with somebody and then you might think about that person and bust out crying it's okay it's okay it's a process it's a process. Even though after seven days you're giving yourself to, to try to get back out there in the world and try to keep moving, it does not mean that you're not going to go through the growing pains of that loss. Someone not being in the physical being is a lot to deal with. You got to look at their clothes. You got to look at pictures. You can go somewhere and it reminds you of them. You hear a song and it reminds you of them. So there's so many aspects. So you got to be okay with going through the process and be growing in strength by feeling it you know sometimes even with the church community we we make everything so spiritual which it is but we still have a flesh body we still in this body we still have five senses we still have emotions and you know you have to address them you have to address them because it'll become an issue um you know not only did i lose my husband 2017 I lost my sister so it's just like and then God asked me to preach the eulogy and that was a big loss and it was all over the news um she got hit by a stray bullet you know and it was just like a whole wound being open again and I had to go through the motions the best that I could but the way life was handling me and what God was asking me because the Bible says uh, too much is given much is required there was a there was a lot that he was requiring from me at the moment and you know I had to deal with it but I thank God that unfortunately the process that it took for me to go through with my husband kind of helped me you know with my sister so I just want to remind you because we're living in an age where there's a lot of losses you know we just got over COVID and you know a lot of people died with COVID and then you know there's a lot of crazy things going on in this world people are shooting up places and all of these things and you know there's a lot of loss there's a lot of anxiety there's a lot of depression there's a lot of things that people are going through and I just felt it was imperative just to have this conversation and try to give you some pointers on what to do and maybe you might have to play this you know maybe maybe you might have to play this just to remind yourself you know what to do but you do have to keep living you do have to keep going um and the best way for you to really keep going is being connected to god you know i just want you um to just talk to him there's no you know people can write as many books as they want how to prayer how to get asked and all of these things but you know the more i'm pre learning as a preacher and teaching and just reading and learning about god i'm learning that it is a relationship and there's no right and wrong way there's no blueprint to a relationship it's just conversation respect honor love unconditional love and when you really unconditionally love someone no matter what circumstances are thrown at you you know how to bounce back and that's the type of comp that's the type of relationship we have to have with god it has to be unconditional so that no matter what rocks your world no matter what happens you still have this foundation and this relationship with him where you can come to him and you know i really just pray um that this blessed you um i know for many this may be a, a touchy situation but i just want my channel you know I, it's lifestyle we're gonna have the vlogs i do the makeup you know laugh and geeky but there's some situations that people are struggling with and you know we just need to have certain conversations and you know you just need to know that you're not alone you know that you can get that you can really 
come come back from anything like you can bounce back you know you can bounce back and i know it's hard sometimes you even feel you know resentment for living sometimes you feel like oh my gosh you know some people you know who've lost children it's like i feel bad i'm moving on and 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 you have to understand that no matter what you do it happened it happened so you have to find it in you to keep going and then you can be the strength that the next person will need because someone too will you know is going to go through it Un unfortunately it's one of those things that's inevitable someone's going to go through it somebody's going to go through loss and you'll be able there to coach them and stuff after you know god brings you through um i love you all the health please again like i said in the beginning please like subscribe to this channel um and share this 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 might really help someone cope this might help someone who was just feeling defeated you know feeling like they want to go too sometimes you know losses can make you have suicidal thoughts and make you feel like you want to go and we know when you get to that level that that's the enemy and he comes to kill still and destroy and you know this world needs you this world needs you this world needs you to go through the grieving process um to get through it so you can have your encounter because i believe that everyone in this world has somebody that is attached to them and there's someone that is attached to you there's someone that's waiting for you to get to the other side so i love you all the health have a great day bye